what we want is optimal. We want an optimum amount of stress. Um, and you know, it's not necessarily the big things that get you. It's often an accumulation of small things. At uh, UVic, we do some work with the RCMP. And uh, we designed a wellness program for them and a fitness program. And I was talking to one of the sergeants. One of the, one of the reasons they became interested, incidentally, was because average life expectancy, 56, over 20 years less than the national average. And that's when they became very, very interested. And I was talking to one of the sergeants. He said, you know, it's not the car chases or the drug busts, the big things that get you. It's all a little crap. You know, it's uh, filling in the forms, the reports. It's showing up at court. And then, the, you know, you don't get to see anybody. He, he described it as being like pecked to death by ducks. <laughs> I thought, what, what, what a good description of stress. And certainly, one of the things that happens uh, when you're stressed is that you burn out. Um, the best description of burnout I've heard is by the Eagles. In one of their songs, they said, you're losing all your highs and lows. Ain't it funny how the feeling goes away? What a, what a great description of burnout. You're losing your highs and lows. You don't laugh. You don't cry. You just get by. You exist in that sort of narrow band in the middle. Tremendous description of burnout. Um, that, that's what happens, I think, when you're overloaded with stress for too long. I was uh, in Edmonton at a teacher's convention. I was riding up an escalator. And um, there was a couple of teachers behind me. And uh, one of them said, are you going to the burnout symposium? And the other guy said, no. Nah. I said, I'm too tired. <laughs> 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 but stress is a reality. I, we're told that 75% of the first visits to primary care physicians are stress-related. 50% of the long-term long disability stress-related. Um, in 1991, Surrey School administrators got very interested in wellness because five of them died in one year. Um, and uh, this was mostly stress related. And you know, if we, in biology, if you have an organism that's surrounded by change to which it can't adapt, the change is happening faster than the organism can adapt, that organism becomes under stress. And that's why a lot of organisms, um, this is business organisms, school groups, organizations such as this, if, if changes are happening around them so fast and they're not adapting, those groups become under stress. That business becomes under stress. And that stress then is passed on to all the people that work in it. And that's the trick. You know, remember the Alanka group that I mentioned, the Action League for absolutely no change at all. People don't like change. They resist change sometimes because they think it's uncomfortable. We've always done it that way. Don't change now. But uh, if you don't change, you miss out. And England was a place that really resisted change. That's why uh, England really had it. They struggled as a country for a long time, because they resisted change a lot. There was only one way to do things, particularly in the place that I grew up. I'll tell you a funny story. It's a funny story. It's a true story. Um, I w when I went to college in England, uh, I was about 21 years old, I got a job as a camp counselor. And um, it was a kid's camp for the summer. And they, the big event of the, the camp was most nights they have a campfire and they had the fire and it was exciting and people would tell stories and sing songs and so on. And I and my assistant counselor wrote a couple of songs, neat little songs, and uh, we were really proud of them. And uh, we went to the administrator and said, oh, can we do these songs at the campfire? He said, we, we did them for him. He said, well, no, I, I really don't think those are appropriate because we usually do the songs out of the campfire songbook. And uh, so don't change, you know. <laughs> Any, anything but that's something different. Well, that's all right. You know, what, because what happened was that those people, all those kids, missed out on hearing me. Um, <laughs> but they also missed out on hearing my assistant. Um, his name? Mick Jagger. <laughs> True story. Mick was my assistant for a year at, uh, at a camp when he was 17 years old. So they, that all those kids never got to hear him. And I, I often wonder if they ever realized who was their assistant counselor. <laughs> of the Pawnee tribe. <laughs> he wasn't very good, actually. He just, uh, the, the, the kids say, well, yeah, what do we do now? Mick? And he said, oh, well, yeah. Um, why, why don't you pull them Cherokee tents down over there? <laughs> Give them a bit of a problem. 